Good evening. Welcome to Montpelier Civic Forum. And this show tonight is one of a series where we're doing the issues and the candidates before the election on November 6th. Uh, the election that will bring us two bond issues, and we're going to discuss one tonight. What we're going to discuss is the wastewater bond. It's a $16.75 million proposed bond issue. And I have city manager Bill Fraser with me to talk about wastewater or sewer. Which one will you call it tonight? Uh, well, it's actually the artist formerly known as the sewer treatment plant. And then, uh, then it became known as the wastewater treatment plant. And now we call it the water resource recovery facility. But it's all the same thing. It's all the sanitary sewers and wastewater that go down into drains as opposed to uh, the water that you drink or storm water. Uh, so. Now, where is this located? This is down at Dog River Field. Uh, most Next to where people pick up sand. Next to where people pick up sand and next to where people play softball and soccer and bring their dogs to the, the river and those kinds of things. So it's a big plant that there. What's the history of that plant? You've been uh, here 20 some odd years. Yeah, it's older than that. Uh, the, the plant was initially built in 1962 and has had various modifications as time goes by. Um, but some of the original equipment is still there and it's really aging, uh, we're having difficulty getting replacement parts for it, it's failing, and so it's in bad need of an upgrade. And we've been, we've been eyeing that for the last few years. In terms of wastewater and water, what, what is the difference between those two different divisions? Now, are they linked together in, in a capital sense? Well, when so we're replacing water, do we not replace sewer? When we're doing sewer, do we, well, are those linked together well, at all? Well, they're linked together from our operation standpoint in that the, we, the, the uh, water and sewer crews are the ones that repair broken water lines or broken sewer lines, and they deal with what we call either, in the water case, we call that a distribution system. So the water comes from Berlin Pond, goes into the water treatment plant, comes down through pipes and is distributed to all of our homes and then it comes out of our tap. Um, so that's the water system. Uh, then once it comes out of our tap or out of, then it goes into the sanitary sewers and it becomes a collection system for collecting wastewater, which at that point is stuff that you flush, the stuff that comes from your shower, comes from your sink, all that sort comes of thing. Comes from the streets as well. Comes from, well, so the, the streets is stormwater. Uh, some of that goes into the wastewater system, but we're really trying to separate that out. So that's something different. Those are storm sewers versus sanitary sewers. Now, how are, are these linked together in a fiscal sense? Well, we, it's all through the Department of Public Works, but we do track them separately and, and uh, you know, your water rates pay for the water sewer treatment and, and distribution system and your sewer rates pay for the sewer collection and, and, co and uh, treatment system. And then the, the stormwater is paid for partly out of general fund and partly out of our stormwater uh, benefit charge. So they are, they're slightly tracked differently. But the wastewater plant, which is what we're talking about today, it takes all the, the sewer that's collected, the, the sanitary sewer, and it treats that through a, a very a biological process uh, where sludges, the, the solids are scraped off or, or separated out. Uh, it's treated through, it's, they're actually bugs, they're organic bugs that eat uh, the, the bad stuff and keep the nutrients. And then it goes through clarifiers and ultimately through an ultraviolet treatment system and then is discharged to our river when it meets discharge standards. And so it's clearly one of the most important things that we do. Clean water, clean river. This river goes down to Lake Champlain. And so obviously even statewide, all of these, these treatment plants are very important. Uh, so we, you know, it's something we, we play, pay close attention to and we've had really good service from this plant for a long time, but it is definitely tired and definitely in need of upgrade. Now our water plant is constantly in a, a push me, pull me with federal standards in terms of keeping our, our water plant contemporary and all. Uh, are you, so our water, so again, let's. I, I'm, I'm trying to, to say, do the federal standards on wastewater affect our decision to upgrade this? Yes, so I want to be clear, that, I want to be clear well. that we're separating water and wastewater. Absolutely. So our water plant is relatively new, it was built in 2000, that's the right. one up on Berlin Hill. Uh, and that is state, pretty much state of the art, at least for the water source that it was designed for. Um, there, it does have some, yeah, it, it's fine, it, and it meets our needs and works really well. The wastewater plant, yes, there's, there's federal standards. To some extent, it's affected by, um, it's indirectly affected by 
the, the standards for Lake Champlain, the, the TMDL as it's called, total maximum daily load. Um, obviously we, pro we discharge phosphorus into the river, so we have to keep our, we have permit limits that we have to keep within certain parameters. For the viewer, there's not going to be a test on this afterwards. Yeah, I hope not, I don't know if I'd pass it. But we have standards, are those standards that are moving standards as? Not, well, the state, state and feds certainly are seeking to make them stricter, but the, you know, they also have to deal with the plant design. One of the, you know, we're gonna get off topic of, on the bond here, and I'll so hopefully- No, it's important to, for us to but understand it, but I think why people, we're paying for what we're paying for. Sure, well, we're paying to, for clean water. This is a water pollution control facility. Uh, you know, back in the day, pre-62 or whatever, you know, people's sewers just ran into rivers. And so, you know, in the 50s and 60s, communities started building sewer systems and, and then, you know, and, and they were just, uh, eventually this treatment technology came in. So now the, the bad stuff can basically be stripped out of it and it meets a certain clean water standard. It's an issue in Vermont because, as, as we all know, the state's under federal order to clean up Lake Champlain. Exactly. Um, but a large portion of the contaminants that go into the lake are from what they call non-point sources, so farmers' fields, different places like that. The wastewater plants are actually a pretty small percentage, but it's one of the few things the state can actually control because there, there are outputs that they can put limits on and they can be, the technology exists to reach those limits, but really it's getting the 5% of the problem through these limits. So it's a, that's a separate topic for another day. When did we last work on the waste treatment plant in a fiscal sense? When did we last? So come? the last major upgrade we did was probably 10 years ago. I didn't, I should have thought to check that. We added the ultraviolet uh, technology. We used to actually have a huge chlorine tank uh, to, to, decontam to uh, disinfect the last, the last stage. And it was probably the most dangerous thing we had in the entire city. Um, and so we've we've gotten rid of that and gone to UV, which is uh, which is much better, more effective, and also much less dangerous in terms of you know potential blow up uh, than uh, than chlorine gas. Um, so that was the last big upgrade. We've had to you know, over time we've had to make incremental improvements to clarifiers and different right. digesters. There's a, you know a lot. I, I'm not that versed on the technical aspect of it, uh, but this would be a major overhaul. This is really would be bringing it to state of art. Okay, in bringing it to state of art, could we have done this incrementally over time? Or, or is this So the, just the only alternative, we've, we've spent the last three or four years studying this. What we could have done in lieu of is what's called an aging infrastructure project. And that would be to basically just take what we have and upgrade it. That would have cost us about $9 million right now and another three million dollars over the next 10 years. So about 12 million dollars in a 10 year period. Uh, and that would have just basically allowed us to do what we do today. What we're proposing instead is what we call an organics to energy project. So even though it costs more, the net savings from the energy savings as well as new revenues that we'll be able to, we'll be able to process additional waste. So things like from say creameries or Breweries, distilleries. Dis distilleries, those kinds of things. More, I don't want to say industrial waste because that, that in, it signifies hazmat, but organic type waste. So think stuff that might come from Ben and Jerry's or Cabot cheese and those kind of things. And they will be able to be processed um, it, with a revenue stream. And that energy that can be created will then be reused in the plant to save energy. Right now we use, a, we use methane to reduce our energy costs. We'll be creating enough to fully heat the plant. Are we building more capacity into this plant as we renew it, as we, as we have a new vision for the plant? We are, although um, the, we actually have, it, plant capacity has two different aspects to it. Uh, so in one aspect, we have plenty of capacity now for, for new private development, that kind of thing. The other aspect or is- Or is distillery. Yeah. Uh, well, so those are different types of waste. That's, you know, there's household still, and regular there's water business. Coming, it's uh, water coming in, but there's strength of waste and the type of, okay. so, so what we're doing is creating the ability to take these stronger wastes um, that, are, are, that aren't normal household waste. They would come in through differently. They would not just come through a pipe. These would still be trucked in and, and brought in. So uh, much like we take septage now, 
So those come in. How would separate. you explain what septage is? Sure. If you have a septic tank uh, for your for your own personal septic system, you have it pumped, and the haulers then have a tank full of s septic. residential septage, right. and they have to get rid of it. And some of that used to be spread on fields, and it did end up in the river, uh, or rivers and waters. Uh, that is becoming more and more restricted. So we we actually make close to a million dollars a year in fees to collect septage, and we have a special processing system. So this would expand that capacity as well as the fees for this other business of these organic wastes. So when you net out the, the energy savings and you net out the revenues from the, the organic waste, it's actually going to cost us less on an annual basis than if we just did the straightforward nine million. Less million. in what sense, Bill? At the absolute minimum, so, so one of the aspects of this is the company that's doing this work is guaranteeing us a certain amount of savings and a certain amount of revenue. Uh, and obviously anything above that is to our, our good. At the guarantee level, we would be saving $92,000 per year um, over the alternate project. Not from what we're paying now. I, I was just clear. about to ask, how does this compare to what we're paying now? So, so I want to be clear. And, and what does we're paying mean? <laughs> exactly. well, we'll get to all of that. Um, but I do, I think this is the, probably the most important point of this whole thing, which is we're going to have a failing plant at some point if we don't upgrade it. And that will be catastrophic. Um, so, so let me finish. So we either have to do this $9 million project or the $16 million project. And I think we've spent almost two years now analyzing the options, and I think the city council has really looked at it. We believe the $60.75 million, million project is better because number one, it, it will cost us less annually than its alternative. Number two, it provides much more energy saving, so it's, it's toward our net zero goal. And number three, it's much more environmentally friendly because all of those wastes that will now be getting processed through us are things that are being put on fields and, and going in, even though they're not Montpelier necessarily waste, in terms of the big picture for the, the state and the region, uh, it, it is a much more environmentally beneficial project. So Now, these are not red, this is not a residential neighborhood we're talking about uh, over by the plant. Mm -hmm. Can the streets support that kind of, of, sure, tra you know, of, of it's heavy right. traffic that mm -hmm. would be coming I in? I mean, it is now. It's, we've been handling septage trucks for quite a while, and I don't think anyone's really noticed it. Um, you know, it's right near the interstate exit. Uh, they come in and out um, or on Route 2. Uh, these are not, uh, th these are truck routes. Uh, it doesn't need to go into downtown. It doesn't need to go into residential area. They are 24-7, so these things can come in the middle of the night um, and often do. They, the, at least our current septage haulers, the regulars, have key cards, you know, that, that, that they swipe and registers how much they're depositing and so they can come in at any time uh, of the night. Obviously a one-off person has to make arrangements with us but um, and we anticipate that regular customers. So if I'm understanding you correctly we have a bond payment that will be due every year. Correct. And that bond payment minus, minus the 93,000 how does this relate to the bond now, $9 million, we assume, has to be spent. Correct. And I wish I had a whiteboard behind me. Yep. $9 million has to be spent, $16 million, $0.75 million. So you're talking $7.75 million uh, in, in borrowing, in essence. Right. And, what kind, and that will require $770,000. Right. So the difference, and the difference is... So, and I want to be clear about the nine million because that also would require an additional three million in about ten years. So, so over the next somewhere in the, in the so future, twelve million, right? right. Uh, and that we're very clear that that needs to occur. The difference, the delta between the borrowing, the the lower number in the sixteen point seven five, that's the difference that's made up in the revenues from the organics and the energy savings, for, with the newer plan. Huh, now. That is some of that is guaranteed. That yes. which means that, that the ninety two thousand the savings of ninety two thousand is guaranteed. The projections are actually will save about two hundred thousand. So, if those trucks do not appear in the volume that we hope they appear, correct, we'll still see cost savings. That's correct. The the company the vendor, so we have a guarantee of a certain amount of revenue and a guarantee of a certain amount of energy savings. 
And so those two combined would be $92,000 less than if we just did our normal aging infrastructure project. Now, per this, year. this technology that we're dealing with is this new technology? Is it tested technology? It's very, it's tested technology. It's, it's done, it, this will be relatively, this will probably be new in Vermont, but it's clearly not new in the Northeast. We've visited plants. Uh, we visited a plant in Virginia that was built by this company, uh, and other companies do it. This isn't a sole source type thing. And um, it works well, it's proven, and there's a market for it. I mean, I think, you know, you've, because correctly, uh, states are taking harder views at how these wastes are, are taken care of. You know, companies have to deal with agricultural whey and, and creamery and all those kinds of things. Um, th this is an opportunity for them to have a more responsible and reliable means of disposing this. So we're, it's a service, but it's also revenue to the city. Um, to offset the construction of it. Do we believe in the future that there might be a market for the, uh, if there's such a need that another plant might emerge that would compete with our plant? We, well, so I think the issue, well, if it did, there would have to be a huge need because somebody else would have to invest $16 million. Okay. Um, we believe and what we're told from the folks we're dealing with and other consultants is that these tend to show up in regions that um, that there just isn't the market within certain, I don't know, in our case, maybe 50 or 100 miles. So, you know, could one 50 or 100 miles is the state of Vermont. Well, right. So, yeah, I mean, you know, so maybe something in Brattleboro could show up, let's say, but it's not likely to, you know, it would be a while before, say, something showed up in Chittenden or northern okay. part of Chittenden, Franklin, maybe. But, uh, you know, the first one in, and, and we're not trying to say this like market share, but just the first one well, is, is going to, it, <laughs> it is kind of market share, but we're not looking at it that way. It's just, we, we have an opportunity. We've got to upgrade our plant. This is a, a smart way to do it that is environmentally friendly and financially friendly. The other piece of it, which we haven't quite talked yet, is that there is an opportunity to spend another couple million dollars uh, and then take it and, and actually create electricity from it. Um, and the city council is very interested in that, uh, and then we could, you know, sell that to the grid, right. or those kind of, or use it in the building, whatever. Uh, what we've chosen to do was to make sure this is up and running, and that we understand it can handle the operations of the plant before we take on electric generation. Again, as the as the viewer is probably hearing this for the first time, so am I. What happens to the additional methane, I think, that we're generating? So for now, um, until we can find better uses the, during summer and those kind of things, it'll be flared off through the proper flaring procedures, not the most efficient use. But in winter, we believe it will heat the entire building, so we'll eliminate all of our heating costs. And uh, we can use some of it for internal. We have things that need to be warmed. Certain things have to be kept at certain temperatures all year round, so some of it will be used for that. But that's the issue. So if we can find use for the excess methane, um, in which we're looking at. One other piece I failed to mention earlier, which is that we are actively seeking uh, other grant funding, which would reduce that 16.75, and we'd still have to bond for it, but um, you know, we never want to promise that we're going to get something that we don't have in hand. But we think between 2 and $3 million is entirely likely or possible that we would receive. So that's... but. Um, you know, now we have a waste we have worse. a wastewater system that's working 24/7 for us Correct. right now. It's being replaced. What happens? Is there going to be an interim period? When yeah, when no one can use their bathrooms. Well, for about a how summer. Will, how how will that be dealt with? It's part of the construction. So they do it in increments. The plant will be functioning the entire time. Um, we won't notice the difference, and obviously that is part of the cost because you can't just shut one down and build a new one. You have to keep them operating at some point you do a switch over uh, so that is what will happen to the old plant well this will be the this is still going to be there I mean it will be it's it's basically replacing in place so um, the the general layout of the plant will be similar they just will be where there was an old di digester there might be a new digester where there was an old tank there will be a new tank so they'll be replacing these things incrementally is, and, uh, and putting in new technology. Now we're working with another company on this, on the second aspect of this. Will they have staff there or will 
our staff handle the entire project so once the, it's up and rolling. It will, this will be a city operated project. This will be our plant just as it is now. City staff will run it. The, the, the company that we're dealing with, ESG uh, Energy Systems Group, they're design engineers and they arrange. So they will, they are, they've done all the cost estimating, they've done the design. We've actually retained a local Vermont company to review all their des designs. So we've second, not second guessed them, but we've proofed their work. And they will put the project together, uh, obviously bid it out and help us through the construction phase, overseeing construction. Uh, How long is that period estimated to be? I don't exactly know. I'm guessing a year, but okay. I, I don't, that seems to be something of this Will sort. city staff, existing city staff be sufficient yes. for this? Yes, it, yeah. We don't think, we'll, we know we, we won't need any additional staff um, to do this. It's, you know, it'll be because even though we're taking on the new uh, technology. technology, I mean the new uh, loads, a lot of that, more of it will be automated. And so some of what we're doing now will become easier and less staff dependent. So we're, we're, we think that we'll be able, well, we're very confident actually that we'll be able to do what we're going to do with the same staff that we have. Has this technology been used in cold weather settings like yeah. we have? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, throughout the Northeast, Pennsylvania, some in, uh, you know, um, trying to think what the further New York state um, you know it's a it's cold weather isn't really I mean there's a lot of heat generated with these so um, you know they, they're they're still organic systems I mean we have our I don't know if you've ever toured the, the wastewater plant but they picked up they're, sand next to it yeah you know there are open pools that and, and they have covers so in the winter we put the covers on them right. and um, you know there are designs for weather conditions how does this affect our, our sewer bills? Well, the project itself um, will, d you know, it depends on how we choose to structure it, but we're looking at over the 10-year period, someone's bill would probably go up uh, on average about $35 a year over the course of... What's, a, what's that as a percent, mm -hmm. roughly? It's roughly between, so... I'm not, I, I will give you an answer. In fact, I have, I have some cheat sheet sure, numbers absolutely. here. Absolutely. Um, Better to use those than exactly, us fumbling around. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so it would be between sort of five and three and a half percent. Uh, this is uh, over the course, over the of, course of time, and some of those depend on exactly how much revenue comes in, how much other, you know. And whether we pick, if we pick up the grant, will that? And that would reduce people? those. So we would see the 5% pretty much immediately in our bills? Probably, yes, yeah, the, we probably would have, um, have that in the upfront because that's when our biggest payments will be and, and also when we don't know exactly what the revenue stream will be. Would and again, that's, some of that is, you know, with the projections, that could go up to 6% if we only hit the guarantee level. So 93,000 is going back into the bond repayment, the, the cost savings of this thing? So the, the, it's, it's not quite as clean as that. We have to pay the whole bond. Right. But the net to the rate payer, but then it's offset, our whole budget is offset by revenues. Mm -hmm. So I, I, let's say the, the, the bond payment, let's say is 700,000, I'm making that up. We're talking about a 20 year bond. Right, right, or 25. Or 25, right. Um, so let's just say the bond payment was a million dollars. Right. So we have to pay that million dollars every year. But if we're getting $500,000 in revenue for these um, enhancements, enhancements and, and from these outside, right. the organic sources, as well as that much in savings from energy, then the net to the rate payer is only 500000 Whereas if we just did the AI, we'd be paying 600000 so in theory, so that's where the a twenty-five dollar, a twenty-five dollar, a twenty-five year bond, in theory, could turn into a twenty-three or twenty-year bond, if we're paying extra into this thing. So, so yeah. So I, I don't. Maybe I didn't explain it. We're not paying extra. What we're doing is the net savings, the net that we're paying out of your sewer rates each year is less for this project than it is for the. We still have to pay the whole bond amount. For right. It. Right. But if there's a profit to be made in this, where is the profit going to go? Well, then it presumably would be in lower rates. 
Okay. If we were taking in more than we needed, then we wouldn't need to raise the rates as much to make the How payments. have the rates been for the last five, ten years? Um, they've been up and down, although lately, the last few years, the City Council has, you know, we've embarked on a, a process to try to deal with this aging infrastructure, which included the plant, includes our old sewer lines and water lines. So basically, they've adopted a policy of 1% above, um, above uh, inflation. And so I'd say the last couple of years, the rates have been around 3%. Um, you know, it's hard to say, but some of that included projections for this future plant upgrade. So. How does this affect our, our ability to replace our aging sewer system underneath the streets? Uh, it doesn't really. I mean, we have to, we ha the, the, so f two things. One, the feeder to this thing. Right. But if there's, if there's a failed treatment system, it doesn't then it doesn't difference. really make any difference. Right. So that's, you know, that's kind of the key th factor. Um, so that's number one. This is highest priority. Number two, um, we do have a long-term plan to do the street, the, them, and that is built into these things. So, I mean, those aren't necessarily bonded. Um, they are sometimes, but not usually. Um, and as bonds expire, right. we deal with it, we Correct. roll them over. That's right. And and bond, the way our bonds are typically structured is that the, the early payments are the biggest ones and they decline over time. So you, you can build up that capacity to take on other debt to fix the other. You know, we try to keep it as steady as possible. Our overall borrowing, because this has a dedicated revenue stream to it, mm -hmm. does it affect our city's general overall borrowing? Well, of course. Because city, city Council has set a recommended target. Mm -hmm. Does this factor into that as well? Yeah, this would fall within the target because the target is, um, is a um, percentage of total revenues. So this, this will add to the total revenues. The, 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 700,000 per year, so when, so even though when you figure this debt in, um, it still falls within the, the city policy. We're very careful about that. With this, along with the parking garage taken together, how does that affect the city's borrowing? And, and doesn't that push towards the upper end of? Yeah, well, it, it does, to own, but it, it's the same issue. Remember, the parking garage is also bringing in a fair amount of right, revenue. Right, right, that it so is. That, so that increases the number that you're taking a percentage of. So. Um, they kind of offset each other. If that was clear to you, it was, it was clear to me, actually, um, and I can't say do you have any questions, but if you do have questions, I'm going to say this, and I think your email is, is public. Absolutely. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll add to that. Um, on October 29th, Monday, October 29th at 6.30 at City Hall, we're having a public hearing on all the ballot items. Uh, the parking garage item, this wastewater plant item, and there are two charter changes. So that's the plastic bags and the, and the non residents. Non right. So uh, anybody who's interested in having a, a more in depth conversation about any of these, please join us on the 29th at 6 30. In addition, there's a lot of information about these projects on the city's website and uh, W Fraser at Montpelier VT.org is my email. Please feel free to email me with any questions and we'll get you the answers. Now, of course, I have to put the pitch in for Orca. Orca will be at that meeting, uh, filming that meeting. And there were a number of council discussions in the past on this very issue that you could find on, on Orca's website. Correct. And basically, uh, it's your choice to make. I think we've informed you a little bit. If you have more questions, certainly go down to Council uh, and you'll have them answered quite ably. And I thank you so very much for watching this show. I hope that you'll watch the show on the parking garage. I also hope that you'll watch all the candidate shows. But what's most important on showing is to show up on Election Day and make sure that your friends and neighbors vote. It's not only a civic duty, but your responsibility. Thank you so very much for watching this.